Hello and welcome to A Certain Style of Podcast, episode 30. Can you believe it? We made it to 30. Woo-hoo. Not not in 30 weeks or 30... To, what's this? The, 30 uh, fortnights. The fortnights. We, we, didn't, we didn't make that, but we made it to 30. So uh, that's something. Uh, we're here to talk about things that interest us, most of all. Um, I'm going to talk about Pokemon. <laughs> because I have to. I, I <laughs> suspected you would. Yeah. It's been a, it's been a hell of a week. <laughs> it's been a week, yeah. It's been like a week now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hell of a week. Mm-hmm. Hell of a week. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm Tim's, talk about... yeah, Tim's got something exciting that he wouldn't tell us about. Do you want well, to do it now or do you want to just do it in, I, I, go into it? Drop into I'm it. just going to go, go straight right, Tim's, Tim's going to go. It's really brief. Okay. And, uh, Is it about briefs? It's like half an hour ago, pretty much to the minute, uh, I tried out the VR experience that was released today, which you no doubt know, Guy. Nope. Star Wars Trials on Tatooine. Oh, oh, that's... No, go on, go on. So VR experience, very short, like not even 10 minutes. And... The video? No, VR okay. experience. Like, so not, not video, sorry, yeah. It's... It's it's not 360. You're just on Tatooine and Millennium Falcon comes in. Fine. Mm. Good. I have heard about this. Fine. But they have they've done the thing. They've done the thing. What's At the thing? last, they've done the thing. Lightsaber, wave around. You can... Interact. Like R2D2 appears, out of his head pops a lightsaber. Uh, you have to stick catch your it. hand out, you go grab it, uh, turn it on. Yeah. Good, looks yeah. looks great. Then stormtroopers appear, start firing at you, and <laughs> you can totally just like whack their laser bolts back at them. Okay, so new rule for the podcast: next time anyone has anything Star Wars related like that, do it at the end. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't keep it in. I'm sorry. Like, then, I played it half an hour ago. Because then we can go <laughs> play it. Whereas now we got to do this for another however long it takes us to do this. And no, then, no, no. Uh, we're thinking is... about it the entire time. Uh, Damn. Mate, I was just thinking. Like, this is the biggest smile I've had on my face in VR, probably. <laughs> yeah. And it's such a small experience. And maybe that helps. I don't know. So, is this a trailer for a game? I presume they'll make yeah. something. This is their first sort of experiment in VR. Uh, I think it's by ILM. Mm. So, um, not particularly complicated, but they they've actually sorry, done I'm going it. Going against my rule, you just interrupted me. But you were, yeah. I but am, they, but they've they've actually done it. They've at last done hitting laser bolts back with a lightsaber. Feel good. It feels pretty awesome. Does it feel right? <laughs> like does the controller I, I, vibrate? And I, I thought that it was gonna feel really hokey. Like when you hit it back, it goes. It kind of goes in a random direction. Yeah. But it feels a little bit more like a tennis racket. It feels a little bit more like you can aim it, depending on what angle you hit it at. And uh, why are we sitting here, Tim? <laughs> like it's 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 so short, but that moment when you just go whack, and then storm temperatures just goes ow. Oh, oh hold hit. on, is this why we're starting the podcast half an hour early later? Not because of me. That was Andy. Ah. But in that time, I uh, used it well. Uh, Okay, yeah. fair enough. So, um, yeah. I just just, just needed to get out of my system. They'd done the thing, and the thing is good. feels good. good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I saw someone made a bootleg lightsaber game, and they basically ripped off uh, all but the name. Um, yeah. And the sounds and everything were the yeah. same. They, 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 they'd kind of done it. But the fact that there's an official Star Wars one, it's good. It's, it's amazing really how much better the complete package is in terms of having a lightsaber that looks amazing, stormtroopers that look great. Mm. And one thing as well that I was sort of, I hadn't really considered, but thinking about it, like I, I just wouldn't have thought it would work, is like laser bolts traveling towards you fast enough to be like threatening like a gun, yeah. but slow enough for you to react. Yeah. And they kind of nail it. Like, yeah. Do they come from quite far away? So you Yeah, so there's like to... enough time. Okay, there's a nice lead in. And it's also quite hard to hit them back. Like right. in the right place. So is it? It's uh, this is entirely three D generated. So you can you kill them and everything. It's not like um, yeah. they're like lasers put over a real background. No, so no, like real stormtroopers and stuff like no, that. No, it's no, no. It's it's, it's all game. Good. But it's just like, oh man, <laughs> I just want to be like you know, kind of surrounded and and actually be taught by the game how to use a lightsaber, how to wield mm. it effectively. I, I want to go through that to like that Jedi training and I want to just be like... Because you can imagine hand-to-hand <sighs> combat's going to be... Ah, uh, you see, that's the thing. Hand-to-hand combat, I less think, good. is the less... Because there's no feedback. Yeah. And I feel like you need feedback for yeah, realistic sword fighting. True. 
The way, the reason, because we were talking about this before, we were like, the lightsaber is a good item to to have in, in VR because it can go through anything. It shouldn't really meet any resistance. Like if you had a metal sword and you hit it through something, it would it would hit it. Yeah. Whereas if you had a lightsaber, it would theoretically, it's not real, would theoretically go through everything. So you don't have necessarily that resistance. But as soon as it hits another lightsaber, it uh, it's gonna it's gonna cause yeah. an impact, and you're not gonna respond to that. It's gonna, so it's prob- gonna, probably gonna be alright. You're, you're gonna just slice people in two every time. <laughs> What if it was real? No, in the in the well, yeah, and <laughs> also <laughs> they they can make it so that it's like hand to hand. You you can't fight someone with another lightsaber, but you can chop people mm. up. Yeah, and that, and that, again, it's like you I think all through. yeah, but that's really good. Like all the stuff with VR is like there are, there are so many limitations to it. It's like working out what those limitations are and making a game that fits that best. Which so that 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 sounds like it would be a cool thing. It's like you're the last Jedi. There's only one Jedi, and that's you. And uh, yeah, so there are no other lightsaber wielders um that's the story that's um sorry that's good it's, it's fine really nice <laughs> it's very hot it's very it is. Hot. oh yeah we must say it's probably the hottest day this, of the this year will be, so far this, this will year. Go, my yeah. glasses are actually yeah, steaming up <laughs> this will go out and it'll be raining and, and frosty much. again but uh for the moment it is uh it is absolutely ridiculous <laughs> outside um which leads me <laughs> swiftly on to pokemon <laughs> yeah which is uh which outside. Is, yeah which is about going outside if you didn't do that already, and I, I didn't, I'm, I'm kind of an inside person, but I have literally been going outside to play the game, and uh, I think that's pretty neat. Uh, we spoke about this a while ago on the podcast when it was uh, when it was announced, and uh, now it's it kind of crept out as well because it had been announced uh, and it had been released in the states, but it hadn't come out here. And I think last Thursday, yeah, last Thursday yeah. it came out, and it's so good, <laughs> it's so good. So I've liked Pokemon forever. So to have the entire world playing a Pokemon game and, and wanting to play it and learning the names of Pokemon and things like that and using it in general conversation is slightly surreal to me, uh, but it's very good. It's very good. So you guys, you played it? Kind of. I went, went for a walk with someone with it today at lunchtime, <laughs> but we couldn't find it. Did you think they were so crazy? We so we didn't really play it. Uh, I didn't really. Ten? I didn't find one. So I have installed it and I've played it a very little bit but basically my girlfriend donna wants to play it so i kind of installed it and she kind of borrows my phone a bit <laughs> unlike you i i never really like i barely saw like the cartoon when it was on and mm. i never played any of the games so i know next to nothing about it and coming from that angle i'm quite shocked by how bad the game is in terms of Okay, so so yeah, like there's nothing to it's a, guide it's, you. It's, it's a terrible game. <laughs> it's quite badly made. It mm. uh, you spend uh, so uh, let's 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 back up a bit. I'm pretty sure everyone knows what it is because it's like all over the news, which again is weird because a Pokemon thing being all over the news yeah. like that. And it's is... also based. Sorry, carry on. I was going to say it's also based on a uh, an original f- uh, game. Ingress. Yeah, so so this is a a game that uses your uh, GPS location to to work. Essentially, you have a Google Maps representation that's overlaid in a Pokemon way, and um, it knows where you are, and you can go for a walk, and random Pokemon will pop up. You tap them because it's a phone based game, and you then swipe and throw a ball at them, and you catch them. And basically, Pokemon's all about building up a collection of Pokemon. Gotta catch them all. Gotta catch them all. <laughs> yes. Uh, there's 150 at the moment, and uh, most people don't know it, which is really interesting. Like from from you guys' point of view, and everyone else, pretty much who's playing it, who don't know who the Pokemon are, because I know it, and I know like they basically don't show you the Pokemon uh, until you catch it or see it. So it's just a silhouette, but I know what all the silhouettes mean but other people don't, and they mm. don't know uh, how the Pokemon evolve, which is also quite exciting, because that's one of the things that is uh, appealing about the game, is not only making uh, your collection, but it's also training them up and uh, making them evolve and going, oh, what's that going to turn into? So everyone gets to go through that, which we went through <laughs> 20 years ago when, when Pokemon first came out. Um, but uh, it, um, I'm going to open it up and get some sounds going. So help me describe. Look, it's colourful. So is there only 150 Pokemon uh, that's <laughs> ever been? So this is the thing. There's a lot more coming. Right. I don't think anyone quite all, knows how many there are. they evolve. But yeah, and they, they basically add, with the Game Boy games, they add like another 100 or 150 every time they release a game. So they're up to about 700, 800 right. now. So there's quite a lot more <laughs> coming. And it's already quite addictive. And it's actually quite hard to get them. Like, you, 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 can, you can walk around, but a lot of the tracking stuff is bust at the moment. So... 
as Tim was saying, it's not a particularly well-made game. I think it's suffering a lot because of servers and possible hack attacks. I don't know if that's true, but it struggles, and you spend maybe ninety percent of the time restarting the thing mm -hmm. and looking at the loading oh, screen and not and not getting in. Time it yeah. didn't work. It does that quite a bit, um, which is a shame because uh, we. Um, it's amazing to me that people are so into it, given yes, the yeah, hurdles. Yeah. I, I was like, I'm into it. I like Pokemon. I really wanted to play this ever, ever since kind of I, I heard about it and the fact that it was actually, whether it's a good game, it's an addictive thing. And uh, yeah, last night I was like, I don't think I want to play this until the bugs are, are fixed. Because we were, um, so me and Gemma were going to go for a walk and, uh, and go and, and look around. And we got out on the road and it basically just didn't load up. So we started to turn back. And then it loaded. And then we kind of had the best run ever. And it's really great when you get a run because you go to all these stops, which is where you get items. And they're dotted around the world. And that's what makes you kind of go for a, a bigger walk. You're like, okay, I need to actually, I need to, I need Pokeballs to catch the Pokemon. So I'll go to a stop, which is just a local landmark in your area. And uh, I have to be near it. And then I can swipe and I get items. And then that thing doesn't re, re sort of uh, reset for like five to 10 minutes. So you walk on to the next one. And basically before you know it, you're quite far away. And uh, you're also somewhere else and maybe other Pokemon show up, which is fun uh, and gives you some exercise. You you can put eggs into hatch, which only are triggered by how far you walk, which is also pretty cool because you're like, I want to hatch that egg. I got to walk five kilometers. We're walking five kilometers. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, my uh, me as a 14 year old did not think that I would ever get a girlfriend given my like of Pokemon at the time. And little did he know that he would get to 31 and have a girlfriend who wanted to play it more than him. <laughs> 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 so a lot of the uh, outings have been driven by Gemma. She's like, yeah, we're going to play Pokemon today. And uh, yeah, we need some time to, to do that. So and can, can you pick up local like... Are they always going to be local to you or do you have to go, how far afield do you have to go? So, so the Pokemon kind of rove around the map. Like you can stay still. Like I've caught plenty just at my desk. You, they, they just move into your general area um, as time goes on. Um, Could Tim be a Pokemon? No, it doesn't work check, like that. Check him. <laughs> check no, no, there's, there's nothing, there's nothing in the area at the moment, but you can see what kind of might be. And they will kind of just pass through your sphere, which is like the radius. And then you tap them and you can catch them. Um, if the tracking stuff worked, then you can conceivably go to... Uh, so we went um, on the weekend to Burry Knoll Park, like a park up the road, and there were some rare-ish Pokemon there, and uh, each Pokemon that is um, nearby kind of has like a like a feet rating, and that's how far away they are, but it doesn't tell you which direction to go. So you're supposed to look at the stuff nearby and uh, sort of tap one to uh, be that... That's the one you want to look for, and it will basically rise up the list the closer you get. So if you walk one direction and it goes down the list, you turn around and go the other way. If it goes up, you keep walking that way and essentially you should find it. But uh, apparently that's bust because every Pokemon is three feet away and uh, <laughs> that's not right. So so they're still working the things out. But yeah, I nearly switched off, but then I had a good run and realized that it's actually quite cool once you get into it and aren't mired by the fact that it crashes every five seconds, which was most people people's experience at the weekend when it, when it launched. Have you seen that video of the people in a park in, yeah. in America? Yeah. And this is why like it's so surreal to me. There's like of people running around this park trying to find this rare Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. And people say, it's here, it's here, and they all leg it over. And it was it was quite surreal to watch. Yeah. There's hundreds of people. Yeah. But that's the thing. It's like, it's I think it's like, even more surreal that it's not a park in America. It's literally on every street corner at the moment. Mm. I, I, yeah, yeah you, I still haven't seen it. Uh, really? Well, no, I literally, been, no, the day. There's like a, there's like a Pokemon Go pose. Like if you play it, I think you recognize like other people play it. Oh, it's it. the please steal my phone pose is what it is. Mm. Uh, but no, you, I went out the first day cause uh, I, I had to go do something. So I only had like an hour to play it, but I was like, okay, I've got an hour it's free. I'm going to go for a walk and I'm going to go see how this works. And because it was like the first day, you can see like a few groups of people just roving around your area. Uh, just like with their phones out looking at it and they're like, I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. They know what I'm doing. And Do that's you chat? Okay. Is, there a, is it a uh, social I have, thing? I have not socially chatted with anyone uh, on the street. You don't like yet. check out where the nearest, like, oh, have you, there's a, there's a. No, not really, but we were. Like a no go down oh, there. Oh, God. We were, see, this, <laughs> see, this is the thing. It's like, uh, you don't know the names. You, you'll know the names if you start playing it, but it's like that knowledge is finally coming in handy because I can like say, okay, that's, that's that. It's called that evolves into this it's this kind of type so if you go and fight in the gyms which is another thing you can do that type will be that type uh even though it doesn't look so like where's like the nearest it, gym it is you? uh there's one at the church down the road cool yeah don't explain a gym 
Uh, it's basically somewhere you, you pick a team when you get to a certain level and uh, three colors are blue, red, and yellow. And you can basically take over gyms, which are other landmarks uh, in your local area. And you basically fight the Pokemon that are already there for control of that gym. And you basically, the, the idea is you, you paint the town yellow, you paint the town blue, paint the town red, depending on the team you're in. Uh, so you just walk around and, and try and battle those gyms. It gains your experience and... Uh, yeah, you, you kind of win one for the team. See, the, the battling bit is the bit that I think would interest me. It's not great. Is it? No, it's a bit like... <laughs> so you've done it? Yeah, 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 I did it. So you can tr- train at your own gyms. I've not done a done a competitive one because people have been... They they basically cracked the game, so they've been playing it for longer than I have. So there are a lot higher levels. I'm at level nine and there are some like near 20 level people, which I won't be able to beat. Um, but the, the battling is like tap based. So it's just like your Pokemon's in the foreground, the enemy Pokemon's in the background, and you just tap it, tap, 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 tap. Is there no skill involved? There's a bit of skill, because you can dodge as well, and you can charge up more powerful attacks. But Pokemon's traditionally turn-based, like an RPG, like a kind of turn-based RPG, and uh, it's not that anymore. So um, the, the, this, the downside to this game, from my point of view, is it doesn't feel particularly like a Pokemon game in the traditional sense. Um, which is good and bad. It's like it's great that it's it's something I want to play and, and is fun. And I can I can collect Pokemon in, in an entirely different way, and it is fun to go for a walk for the purposes of going and getting Pokemon. But at the same time, uh, I do love the other the actual mainline games, and uh, the fact that it deviates from that quite significantly is strange. If this was bug free, mm. how long do you think you might play this for, or how regularly? Because obviously it's quite new right now. Yeah, yeah. I think it will die off. I th- I think because it's actually... I don't know. I think when it works, and I think the most rewarding thing would be to track a Pokemon that you want to find. Like, you see it, and you're like, okay, I'm going to go find that, and I found it, and I caught it. Success. That's the game, I think. I think the gym battling is something for slightly more hardcore people, but that, that I don't think is going to appeal to too many um, sort of regular people. So it is the collecting side. And that's enjoyable because it's just like building a collection of anything. Like people want to get one of everything. Yeah, but like... So... collect start, When you're starting to collect stuff and it's kind of made... Y- yeah. Easy I, and like rewarding for you, it's great. But then when you're left... left when there's either like 500 more yeah, that's, and you're like... Ugh, well, I don't more. know. They, that, that tracking thing hasn't worked yet, so I've not been able to enjoy that. So I don't know how long that will last or have, have appeal. But I, I do... I, I think it could wear... I think it could wear out a bit because there's so many common Pokemon around that you just catch all day, every day. And you're like, okay, I really want something new now. And eventually it's going to be like, well, I can't really be asked to leave my house. Or I have no reason to leave my house. And then you'll just stop stop using it. You'll go back to Facebook. Because at the moment, I check this one and I check Facebook, which is good. It's getting me away from Facebook. <laughs> so... Are you spending less time on Facebook or just is this, more time is on this Facebook? Is this because you've no, just recently <laughs> gone no, freelance as well? Kind of, this is kind, kind of, of, This yeah. has come out yeah. just the second gonna, week yeah. of... <laughs> I was going to say, is this my first podcast freelance? Uh-huh. I am yes. now free, yeah, I am now a freelance uh, filmmaker. Uh, yeah. Maybe we should have led so, with that. No, <laughs> it's, it's all right. I, I, am, yeah, I thought so you were going to and then I'll... Yeah. Well, I wasn't sure. I couldn't remember the last time we did uh-huh. did one. It's uh, it's been a so long time. So, how are you in... finding uh, the productivity with the? It's fine. So, so yeah. So, I went freelance uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I'm now working from home quite significantly, or I'm out and about, which is good for the game as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was, although I was in I was in Cornwall the other day, and they don't have technology, so uh, there was no phone no. signal, <laughs> there was no Wi-Fi, there was nothing. No and so I arrived, and this was the day it came out. So this was Thursday, it came out, I got it, and then we travelled down to Cornwall, and I was like, cool, there's going to be some interesting Pokemon there. It's by the sea. I'm sure the GPS will uh, adapt for that, and uh, there's no signal, so I didn't play anything. <laughs> Um, but I don't think, cause it's like an idle game. It's like, you, you just check it every now and again, like a little bit here, a little bit there, kind of like Facebook. It's like, oh, what's happening now? Nothing's happening. I'll put it back down again. So you, you do it in really short little bursts, unless you're going for a walk, in which case you, you, you kind of, off, you're in the pose, you're just fixed looking at it. So if you're walking. in, if you're in the middle of work and it, and you check it and it goes, oh, there's a, there's a rare Pokemon outside. Yeah. Well, you can do it one or two ways. You can have it open and, uh, like in low power mode. Uh, which the phone knows it's upside down and it saves your battery. Uh, but that tends to make it crash some more. So the only way to play it properly is to just keep it open <laughs> forever <laughs> just uh, and just use your battery, essentially. And that will vibrate every time something pops up. But if it was to work in low power mode, you could put it in your pocket and it would only vibrate when you went past something of significance and then you bring it out if you want to. But yeah, if something pops up, it's probably about a 30-second interaction or maybe a minute. 
Hmm. And it's then, very yeah. quick. Like I say, it's not like when you, when you play the game and, and it's uh, it's a turn based system of battling to catch a Pokemon. You have to battle it down to a certain health level and then throw a ball at it. With this, you just throw a ball, and um, some of them are hard harder to catch than uh, than others. But you can do like special throws, and it rewards you for accuracy as to whether you catch it or not, um, which is satisfying sometimes when it works uh basically the the coolest thing about this game is it's like augmented reality so you can see the pokemon in like real life using the camera but everyone turns that off <laughs> straight away because it's way easier to catch pokemon without it um so everyone turns that off and that's kind of one of the features of the game oh i thought that was part of the fun you sort of like walk around going oh, it is for the first couple of times is, i think uh, but, then it is, but when care. yeah when you're like okay, i actually want to start catching yeah. these and pokeballs you are a finite amount of like resource uh, i i have to turn that off um so and, and yeah it's just a bit like i there's there's a lot of stories going around about how people are using this and it's causing mischief <laughs> essentially because there are stops around every town so criminals know that people are going to be there at some point quite with a lot of people phone. with an expensive phone and they might be small and vulnerable so it it, it, it it's not uh, yeah it's not one of the best and distracted <laughs> uh, yeah so the less you're doing the less you're doing this yeah. and swinging your arm around to try and find the damn thing because it's quite cool because you find it and you're in the right spot and then you do have to do that extra little bit of work to swing your phone around and find it but um yeah that just causes uh, attention to be brought to you um, whereas you can keep it quite close and do it. Yeah. The non AR. And on the one hand, I'm amazed how well the AR works. And on the other hand, eh. it's awful. Have you ever shook the phone? <laughs> <laughs> or you can you just, it appears and it's there and it tracks and it just it doesn't work. No, no, no. But like having some idea of tables or something, like sometimes it gets it right. Yeah, sometimes. But I don't know whether that's just luck. I think, I don't, I don't think it's luck. I just think it's very sensitive. Like if you move your phone away and then come back to it, it will have moved and it, and it won't be in the right place. So it's, it's, it's good as long as you're keeping it quite controlled. Um, mm. But, uh, so yeah, that's Pokemon Go. I like it. It uh, is, yeah, it's, you just, so, you're just addicted to doing so it. So do you, do you think that, because they keep going on about this is a sort of game changer and all like loads more games are going to be spurned, spawned off this. Do you think the aspects are the the uh, augmented reality stuff or do you think it's the getting out and going... It's getting like, out. The walk. So, so it, you think it's going to be very... There are going to be loads of games coming out that are all very location-based and you have to go out and explore so. and find stuff. I, I think, think so, yeah. There are, there are like three things. There's like there's the collecting aspect. There's the the exercise aspect, which is sort of part like part and parcel of the collecting. And then there's the the um what would you call it? Kind of the base system, which is where you you try and go to these gyms and and try and create more yellow, blue, or red dominance in, in your area, and that will appeal uh, to a certain kind of people. So there's there's a, there's, a, there's a bunch of people that can get something out of it. And but I also think there's one extra thing that this has mm. that others aren't going to have. Which is Pokemon. fairly obviously oh, the, po- <laughs> the fact yeah, that it's Pokemon. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. quite seriously about this. I was joking about this to Donna just before it came out. It's mm. like, how good is it right now to make a cartoon show at a loss so that in 10 years you can make a game about it? Yeah. Like, yeah, it's fantastic. It's, it's quite interesting it's, if you think about it's that. It's the longest game. <laughs> I know, I, I, I never really thought about it like that. I mean, Pokemon has done well, like, forever. Like, the games sell consoles. They literally sell handheld consoles. So they've, they've always done well. So this is just more for them because um, it's 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 produced uh, by the same people who made the game. It's, mm. they're going to, they're doing incredibly But I, I do find it well a little bit, I, I'm less convinced there will be a spate of these games. I think it makes it more accessible, like the genre. Mm. And I think there will be other ones. And I think a lot of them will be very close, but less buggy, like capturing things and tracking things down and then yeah. battling and or I've, raising I've, them. I've, yeah, well, they tried. I mean, Andy, Andy touched on this earlier. They made a game previously and mm. it did OK. It was kind of it was, it got it was re- minus good reviews, I think. Yeah, yeah it, had it was like six million users or something. Yeah, it was minus the collecting. It was more about sort of uh, going to a location. And uh, I think it was uh, it was almost like a rhythm game. You had to like tap in a certain way. I'm not, not entirely sure when you were near the monument to try and take that for your team. Yeah. Um, Wasn't it sort of based on historic kind of it, locations and stuff? Yeah, I don't. I think it was more just landmarks, kind of like the way the gyms work, yeah. like in the church down the road or um, or the pub. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that I mean that game did okay, but it's not like yeah that didn't spring. That only 
created another game by, by them of yeah. the same kind of thing. They basically just reskinned that and added a few extra bits and pieces. Which so, is actually I, worth noting because to be like a Pokestop, you have to like submit an application yeah, form yeah. to become a Pokestop because obviously you can get a lot more business. Some of it's there already. Some of it's there based on the data they collected from the previous game. That's what I'm saying. Um, so a lot, a lot of it is. But for another game to come out and do this, like how many times do you think like a local store or a local church will apply different processes to yeah. different games yeah, to have yeah. theirs as like a stop. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you might yeah. pay money and get that could be another. But I don't. Yeah, again, source. I don't mind. I mean, that's it. That's People another great buy, thing that comes buy, out. Of it. Yeah, it's um, interesting. I mean, uh, uh, it's kind of to me. It sounded a bit like geocaching. So you sort mm. of like it's a sort of virtual geocaching. Yeah. So I can kind of see like games like that, and where you sort of maybe you've got to solve puzzles by going to different locations and find, finding different things. But also I was thinking, uh, I, I mean, I think there has been a few games that are kind of around this, but the whole sort of sports tracking, you know, everyone's got like Strava and all these mm. kind of Garmin type things. I wonder whether they're going to start kind of gamifying those. Cause part of this is, is you have to walk a certain distance yep. and you get, different achievements and stuff so i wonder whether they'll start gamifying kind of fitness things so you have to you know run so many miles and you get yeah they they do a bit already but it's just not anything you particularly want like i, I remember the do you remember the nike chip that everyone had that came out that was basically something you strapped to your shoe that was like, like the fit was, bit yeah kind thing. of yeah yeah it was, it was very much like that but yeah you would you would plug it into your computer and, and download the data and then if you got a certain distance or you beat a certain pv you'd get like a little video would pop up by some athlete and they tell you, you did a good job <laughs> um which is not necessarily something you want uh it's cool but um but yeah it's just what those incentives are to make people go out and and, and do stuff i suppose is is the key to that yeah um I mean, there's that. You, I you guess talk, you've spoken about that zombie game as well. Before, yeah, where you where you run away from zombies whilst uh, like on a treadmill or jogging around the block, um, which is a yeah. At the moment, moment, you know, Strava's got like I the fastest meant... time for a period, like for mm. a route or whatever. That's cool. Yeah, I guess that's sort of gamified in in itself, but like actually sort of associating a sort actually of building a world, in the gambling yeah, mechanics or mm, building like, like a yeah. yeah gambling that would be good, <laughs> but like building a world. Well, no, I mean, with I, meant, I meant gambling mechanics. Like, that's oh, right. what Pokemon is full of. That's why it's so successful. Oh, okay. I thought you meant actually gambling on... Everything's gambling. People. Yeah. The sooner you accept um, that, the sooner you can gamble. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's actually an interesting idea. What if you could bet um, how fast somebody would go to work or something? <laughs> how far? Like How fast somebody would... Like, how long but, somebody would take to get to work? So, like, you picked a tracker and you said, I bet that they will get there within 5 minutes 30 and 5 minutes 45. They don't know that you've bet on them. Oh, that's the movie Rat Race. <laughs> Have you seen Rat no. Race? Yes, that is a good film. <laughs> that's basically a bunch of millionaires they, in Vegas who just um, decide that they're tired of betting oh, on that one. Get a load yeah, of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so they get a load of yeah, regular yeah. people and just, well, like... Yeah, they, even they, the, they, that's they, like hunting them, right? They, yeah, they basically t they tell them that there's, like, uh, many, many, many amounts of money uh, at some location and it's, like, the first one to get there gets it. And they basically... I really all, enjoyed that film. Other. It's, like, human versus human. Um... Yeah, it's not so Rowan Atkinson. Yeah, it does. Yeah, he, he, he I can't remember a, if he plays like a Mr. Beanie type character. Or uh, a, he, I think he, he plays like a. I think it's like an Eastern European. He oh yeah, like, it's a day, it's a day. yes, it's, it's like a uh, racial right, stereotype. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's kind of weird. But he has narcolepsy because it's the easiest joke in the world to do. Is uh, so obviously he's See, doing, he's doing really well, and then he just falls asleep. I just, yeah, I really, I bought that. I love. I I used to love films like that, like Cannonball Run and yeah. all those kind of slightly mad cat capers where there's lots of different characters yeah. and, and stuff i think it kind of reminded fun. me of that a bit uh, uh yeah so oh yeah sorry sidetrack that's uh, that's that's something that happened in a film yeah, um, but it's, we it's, talk it's, about films it's not a million so miles away it's from a film life. and game podcast and vr yes uh, it is and there's a guy doing <laughs> dance that goes with it <laughs> cool um cool. well does anybody have anything else i saw uh oh i saw godzilla oh not like, real, real life. That that's another thing that actually no. can happen. But uh, the which film? film the uh, the, the most recent one, one. Yeah, the 2014 one. And uh -huh. I really liked it. I would suggest watching it uh -huh. to both of you if you haven't already seen it. Uh, have you seen it? I can't remember. I can't even remember the trailer. Have you seen a Godzilla film recently? No. Is it Godzilla? Like, is it a different King, take King on monsters? it? <laughs> Does it start with a nuclear like test? They facility? all start with that. 
do they? It's got uh, it's got Walt from Breaking Bad in it, so you probably know it if you saw oh, God, him. I can't remember now. Well, did, anyway, yeah, I'm not sure. Did it have have Matthew Broderick in it? I don't even know who that is because that was '97 and that was a terrible <laughs> movie. Matthew Broderick. He was... No, it must have been more recent than '97. Yeah. First Bueller. Are there any between '97 and '14? Matthew Broderick. That is Broderick. Matthew, yeah, that is Matthew Broderick. Yes. That, so it was 2014, so it wasn't that long ago. Was there anything between 97 and 14? Uh, no. Then it, I would have <laughs> seen it. Yeah. So it's, it's, do you not like it? No. Really? Uh, so so, so I, I think I was I was kind of like reeling from the 97 one because I was kind of excited for that and it, it wasn't very good. It took me a long time to realise that because I was a kid and it was exciting. Um, but they they kind of missed the point a bit with that and it feels like they brought it back with, with this one. It was kind of a, a warning about uh, nuclear power and stuff um and how abusing it can go very wrong and uh it kind of spawned all these monsters uh so in 97 you kind of get this godzilla thing that just doesn't really know what it's doing and it's in new york for whatever reason um and and then the humans are just assholes and destroy it basically um which is real sad we spoke about that before real sad real sad scene on the bridge um whereas this one goes back to the kind of like okay godzilla's kind of a little bit of an equalizer and he destroys monsters so these other weird bad ones that uh, are kind of i guess the bad guys but they're just doing their thing but they're destroying a lot of things godzilla's the equalizer who goes and fights them I so, everyone, feeling so, I've the seen this. so the humans are on godzilla's <laughs> side <laughs> it can't have been that good i think it rings it's about. really neat well no it, no because it builds. was there something similar in the one with the big robots and they have to beat up oh monsters. pacific rim yeah well, there's Pacific Rim with the robots beating up monsters, but it's, yeah. it's not the same film. Similar, big things. Yeah, so big, basically, thing, big things beating each other up. Yeah. But in this one, it's robots. In, in Godzilla, it's Godzilla big beating up other monsters. monsters. Yeah. So it sounds like Pacific Rim, but with a monster. It is a little bit. Yeah, but it's quite cool. They like It builds, because if you, if you, if you don't really know what to expect, it's kind of like you start with this whole, oh, there's a looming threat of like Godzilla, Spoiler and then you realise it's something else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, spoiler alert. So, well, it, maybe, so it basically builds to the point where you're like, oh, Godzilla's on our side, and everyone's okay with that. So it's not like they're going to blow. Yeah, him they up got like King they, Kong as like well. They did in '97. No, King Kong's not in it. Um, so it's not like they're going to blow him up like they did in '97. It's like they they're kind of like, yeah, he's he's good. Yeah, he'll, he'll come come save us, and we've got to sort of help him out if we can. Cool. It's a good Sunday afternoon film. And that's not me backtracking. I think that's when I watched it, and I think that's the perfect time to watch it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I did enjoy. I do it think that. there's a lot of people that could enjoy that film. Yeah, I, I think I could be enjoy it if I was in the right mood. It was the fact that they were brave enough to do that rather than just be like, "Oh, the humans got to destroy the monsters." It's like they they just let the uh, the big monsters fight out. Yeah, and they, yeah, it was nice. I don't know. Nice I'd like uh, maybe maybe yeah. I thought the start I, was good. I enjoyed the start. I think. I think. Yeah. But they don't show. They do. They do the whole thing because it's uh, it's a Gareth Edwards who did Monsters. Um, he they don't show you a lot. Like the second uh, that film goes for the longest time by Monsters. going. No, no, no. So yeah, he directed Monsters yeah. and then he directed Godzilla. But he does a really good thing of like cause he didn't show you a lot in Monsters and then in this it's like it is a thing and then no, 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 you're not seeing yeah. that or like it's all the build up Using to the, the big sort of fight. jaws the jaws yeah kind, kind of, of you do see a lot of the bad monsters but you don't see Godzilla at all uh, spoilers at all, yeah. <laughs> whenever you see Godzilla but yeah the, the build up to the sort of first time you see them like go like this is, is quite cool they, they yeah. always find a reason to pull away from it like, I like that tease yeah I like big things fighting yeah cool um, uh, what was I going to say uh, oh yeah um, have you has anyone been to the cinema recently no no. No. Does anyone want to go to the cinema uh, at some point? Yeah. Maybe once I'm, once. <laughs> well, I'm kinda I I'd quite like to see uh the Ghostbusters uh, okay. film. I know we we kinda <laughs> dismissed it before, um and some say it unfairly. But uh it's supposed to be not bad. And I, I think if you go with go to it thinking it's a new film, I'm trying to think there was a there was a remake a few years ago of an, another film, and as long as you go with no expectation and sort of just see it as a separate film to the other one, mm -hmm. then then you kind of, I think you can enjoy it. I don't want to see it. I'm all right, thanks. No. It's not that I'm against it. it, it it's We've spoke about this before. It's being marketed to people who are not me. <laughs> yes. And I'm curious, but not that curious to spend 10 quid on it. No, it looks like Bride. I'm sorry. Bride yeah, Maids again, with, that's, that's with I'm Ghost. I'm interested in going to see it. I've not seen Bridesmaids, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not interested. Um, but... Uh, 
also, I saw that the new Bourne film's coming out. Are we excited about that? I, I, I think you'll find that in uh, the Bourne... What's the third one? Supremacy? Uh, Bourne... How can you tell? What Born Bourne Legs, the Bourne Identity, so the Bourne... Born Supre- Supremacy. Born, Born Ultimatum. Born, Born Ultimatum was the last one with Born in it. Yes. And then there's Born Legacy, which didn't have Born in it. Had yeah, another guy. Jeremy Renner. So this is a new one. Yeah. Uh, the third one, uh, Ultimatum, um, wrapped it up fine for me. So I, I'm quite there happy with a, it. Finishing. It worked, did work very well as a trilogy. Um, I think all three films stand up I, well. Yes, they, yes, they do. Yeah, they, they do. I, I, mm, I don't want to... I kind of miss... I don't, don't want to... Born. I, I kind of missed the character. I thought he was good. He was a bit of an empty shell, though. It was a nice change in a time where we needed a bit of a change of yeah. that kind of like Bondy character. But we've had that change. I didn't realize it was two thousand and six when that last one came out. Yeah, it was. Oh, really? What's yeah, the name of the so ten years ago. Uh, uh, it's Paul Greengrass. It's Paul Greengrass. But he didn't do the I first heard him on one. the radio. He didn't, he didn't do the first one. And, and I would say the first one's the best one. And he didn't direct that. It was um, directed right. by uh, another guy. I forget. The first one's good. I think it's. I like the second one. The most, I think. The Who first one, it? sorry, but I was listening to someone on the radio. Was it? I, I'm not. Maybe it wasn't director. But was it writer or someone? Um, gosh, I'm so rubbish at this. But they, um, they were saying that they were asked to do Bond, or like it's been talked about quite a few times, I think. But he thought, I haven't really processed like he had. He thought about it this way, but he sees like born almost as like an antidote to the kind of bond yeah. approach. Yeah. Um, and I've always considered them different, but I've never really thought that was from a conscious, there's a lot of things wrong with bond. Want to make something. Mm. I felt like they did with Casino Royale though. I, I felt like that's, that's my favorite bond for that very reason. It's like whatever mm. born did bond then did. And mm. then they've both gone whatever their separate ways now, but they both kind of did a similar thing at a similar time. And that was very good for mm-hmm. rejuvenating that whole thing. But it feels like, I mean, we had three born films. We had uh, maybe two, two bond films, the uh, Casino Royale and Quantum of Solace that I would say were pretty good. And then it started to go downhill in my opinion, back towards regular bond. So I don't know. I, I no, no. Sorry. It's all right. I'm 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 out. <laughs> <laughs> but do uh, we know of any other films that are coming out? Uh, What's happened to all the summer block? Have I just missed all the summer blockbusters? I don't think they're for us anymore. We could have seen Turtles. I was interested in Turtles, but I never got to see. There the must one have been some Marvel films. Uh, oh yeah, the Civil War. Yeah, that was one of the biggest films ever. <laughs> Civil oh, really? War came out. Was Batman that summer, that's not a summer block. Uh, I would say kind of, I, I would I would put the sort of May one in, into into summer blockbusters now. I just because that's when they come out. I think the summer is maybe just the well. It's, what have we had? We've had Ghostbusters, Turtles. Um, did that um, Point Break one come out? Point Break. Yeah. Really? Oh, did that remake come out? Was that? No, no. <laughs> Could might as well have been. No, that, that, that was a, yeah. They did a remake of Point Break, but that was another one where it was kind of like throw away some of the source material and uh, and start again. Yeah, uh, but I don't think it was very good. Um, I have Ooh. another one. Sorry, go no. uh, go on. I was going to bring it back to Star Wars. Ah, oh, I was going to go away from Star Wars. Oh, okay. Uh, so well, yeah. I was going to say that Doug uh, Lehman was the guy who directed Born Identity, and the reason I checked that uh, and went, oh. I didn't realize someone else directed the first one. It was because I watched Edge of Tomorrow uh, or Lived I Repeat. Mm-hmm. Uh, have any of you guys seen that? Uh, yeah. Yes, I enjoyed it. It's quite good. Yeah. yeah, it's quite a good film. It's good. <laughs> it goes really, it's a bit forgetful towards the end. Yeah. But like on the lead up to that, I was like, it's yeah, like Groundhog really... Day, it day with, with, with guns. With guns <laughs> and aliens. I, I uh, really yeah. enjoy, especially the sequence where they're just kind of showing you little clips of each day. Yeah, I and was... he basically just keeps getting. <laughs> sorry, spoiler alert again, but uh, uh, I won't explain the plot. But yeah, no, where he just get, he getting just repeat, killed repeat, each repeat, time. Repeat. He's like, no, no, I'm okay. Yeah, I, I really liked. Uh, I was kind of worried because when it first started, I remember seeing the trailers, and I think this this film had a whole load of marketing problems, almost to the point, well, to the point where they changed the name because it was out at cinemas as uh, Edge of Tomorrow. And then when it came out for home release, uh, it was called uh, Live, Die, Repeat, Tommy Colon, Edge of Tomorrow. <laughs> because maybe people just wouldn't go and see Edge of Tomorrow. Maybe they thought it was some kind of like Honestly, or... when you say Edge of Tomorrow, I can't think what film that is. But when, when you, you say Live, when, Die, Repeat. Yes, but when you've seen the film and... I, I don't then... know what Edge of Tomorrow is. Like, I, I, really? I but know... when you've seen the film and you realise what's going on there, you're like, Edge of Tomorrow, that's a good name. 
that they're on the edge I've of tomorrow. I've never really thought about that. But yeah, it's it kind of works. It's, but I, I, yeah, I think the Live, Die, Repeat The had this works very better. conversation where someone went... It's too clever. It's too clever for its <laughs> yeah. own good. Yeah. 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 Exactly. You have to really think about it after you've seen the film. But if you haven't seen the film, which is like... Most you people. Want, most people... <laughs> then it doesn't work. Yes, that's that's very true. Um, but anyway, uh, good name. Anyway, uh, so so yeah, it, I, 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 the, the trailers kind of did a similar thing where I don't think they really... I don't, they didn't they didn't market it towards what I liked because I basically saw it as a, here's a cool concept um, and here's Tom Cruise, which is all good in my books. And then there were these horrible like uh, training scenes where Tom Cruise is like, you've got to try like better and you've got to do it better than that because um, he's able to repeat the same day and, and, and do kind of like what Bill Murray did and just uh, learn things um, that no one else could learn um, and I thought that was going to be cheesy as hell and a bit dull uh, but they actually handled it really well without doing anything particularly new with it it was just like there was just a nice tone yeah. and, and pace to everything it was, it was action-y there was a bit of comedy in there yeah, yeah. But it wasn't a comedy no, but it's not. It's not particularly serious. I mean, it's a guy. It's like Groundhog Day. It's yeah. like that's that goes pretty dark at certain points. Um, when he, he obviously, yeah, there's. Can we spoil Groundhog Day? I think so. I think it's <laughs> been think out for like yeah. thirty years. Um, but yeah, obviously, when he starts to like like kill, kill himself over and over and over again because he wants to get out, and it's like the amount of when, you know, we've had the conversation about how long he was actually in Groundhog Day, and mm. it's like when you start thinking oh, about it, it's yeah. pretty, pretty horrible. Um, yeah, this does that whole it's, it's a stupid idea, really. Um, this is obviously bad for humanity, but it's a summer film, so let's have some fun. Uh, it still manages to pull that through, and uh, and Tom Cruise is awesome as ever doing a role that I think is, is good for Tom Cruise. Like you Actually, see, I was going to say that. I felt like that role was kind of written for him. Like, it has, like, bits of Top Gun. It has mm. bits of Mission Impossible. Yeah. It has, like... It's, it's just nice When's not... When's he going to get too old for that kind of thing? Never. <laughs> he has enough money in <laughs> He's just going to suddenly turn into Harrison Ford at well, some point. It's all that free He's just going to, like, literally, like, one year, one year, it'll just be, like... He'll suddenly he'll, be old. He'll do the gag, I'm too old for this shit or whatever you better not and then <laughs> and then that'll be it that'll be it that'll be his career over and you'll just be playing the the guy who's too old for everything yeah well uh, <laughs> i don't know Sorry, I, maybe i'm just no I, cynic. no 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 it's great i mean i i i love it with seeing tom cruise and stuff i like seeing him do different stuff because that film starts with him not being tom cruisey yeah he's kind of like he's kind of a bit of a weedy guy and it's it's neat when it started like that because i thought he was going to be like your regular tom cruise he's kind of he's fine he could deal with anything and, uh, and they just <laughs> throw this guy mm. into a really horrible situation and he basically reacts to it. And I was like, that's really cool. And the fact that it's Tom Cruise is even better because it has a bit more gravity because it's like, uh, it's like, um, what was the uh, Collateral uh, was the other film where, have you seen Collateral? What happens? Uh, so Tom Cruise is a hitman. He's a bad guy, essentially. And uh, Jamie Foxx is a taxi driver and Tom Cruise gets into yeah. his taxi and they have a basically back and forth and have to go around the city. And There's a suitcase something. in it. There I is remember, a suitcase that, in, in it, yes. Yeah, 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 but yeah, I haven't seen the suitcase. film. It's really good. But that's Tom Cruise playing a part that you wouldn't expect. He's playing a bad guy. And uh, and he's really good in it. It's a really good film. You should you should definitely go and check that out. Um, but yeah, I, I love it when he does when he does stuff like that because you're like, he's a good actor. He is a good actor. It's like people forget because he's in so much other things where it's just like Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise. Um, but he can he can do it when when yeah, he used to do quite to. a lot of like there's uh, was it Born on the Fourth of July yeah 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 stuff like that yeah Jerry Maguire if you count that as yeah kind of yeah that's yeah, good it's good yeah yeah we like Tom Cruise yeah <laughs> as an um, actor uh, yeah I've never met him what, no, what was he either. filming yeah. in Oxford uh, the recently? Mummy oh yeah which will be out soon don't know how I feel about that as much as I like Tom Cruise I quite like the mummy oh see so yeah, i re Brendan reacted Fraser. really badly when i found out they were re remaking that but i didn't realize tom cruise was in it yeah they were filming it in oxford yeah with tom cruise, tom cruise. possibly at the pit was it at the pit rivers museum uh possibly it was just down in the center in of town, town in some general oldy looking bits um i think if i was gonna film the mummy i'd film it in the pit rivers museum Really? If yeah. I was to film the mummy and I had if literally I was film anywhere to go, the museum, I'd film it in the I would okay. probably go to Egypt. <laughs> <laughs> if you could go anywhere and film the mummy, um, I don't know, not in the moment. Well, no, no, I don't think Egypt's ever a good place to go, but great location with the big security guards. Be fine. Yeah, yeah, be all right. Be fine. Um, yeah. Anything else anybody wants to raise? 
before we depart for an unknown amount of time. <laughs> Hopefully, come back in two weeks. Two weeks in pod, uh, two weeks in podcast years is uh, it's a lot longer. Than, uh, <laughs> is in regular time. Uh, now, keep it short and sweet. It's too hot. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> cool oh well thanks guys uh we'll see you next time uh and i'll tell you how many more pokemon i've got okay cool yeah thank cool. you cheers bye 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 bye